Hello everybody, Reed Work Turbo. Welcome to Turbo Tech Thursday here on our YouTube and Instagram channel. I had a, a little bit of an idea of, of what I wanted to cover in my videos and um, like I told you guys before, I'm not a tech guy, so uh, it's taken me a little while to get all this editing and, and video stuff figured out, but we're just going to shoot a one take and done kind of deal for, for the time being and, and we'll eventually get around to uh, a little more uh, professional results, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, I'm glad y'all guys are joining me. Uh, it means the world to have a little bit of an audience out there to kind of uh, share some of my knowledge with you guys on. Um, the topic of today is going to be the, the current question we get all the time about billet wheels. Are billet wheels better? Are billet wheels lighter? Are billet wheels stronger? Do I need a billet wheel? These are all uh, S400 based 75 millimeter S475 wheels, except for this one. This is, uh, we'll, we'll exclude that guy for just a minute. This is your right out of the box cast wheel from Board Warner. A proven performer for its size, very reliable. Millions of them, I think, have been sold. Um, it is made obviously from cast aluminum it's not just regular old cast aluminum i'm sure uh, the the process is very high tech so it yields a incredibly nice surface finish a very dense casting um, and a very well put together piece that requires very little balancing you know this wheel here has literally no material for a cast wheel removed off of it for balancing so that just goes to show you the amount of technology put into that casting here we have our stock replacement uh, billet S475. So when I say stock replacement, it meets the factory 75 millimeter curvature. So it'll drop right into an unmodified housing. We also have a little different version of that same wheel. And the Borg Warner forged milled wheel. The reason why I got all these set out here on the table is pretty straightforward. This wheel is a machined from solid. So that means it starts out life as a solid piece of aluminum. It is then five axis machined to the desired blade profile, blade height, geometry, etc., etc. This wheel is what we refer to in the industry as a flank milled wheel. The term flank milling is very simple. When the tool contacts the surface area of the blade as it cuts it in the machine, it lays completely parallel with the surface at all times. This method of machining is very efficient. It provides a very nice surface finish. As you can see, this wheel looks literally polished. And its its biggest attribute is how fast, relatively, this wheel can be produced. So from start to finish, think of the tool is laying flat like my finger, and it follows the contour of the blade. The cons to this is the blade progression, or the curvature of the blade from inducer to exducer, is a very defined shape that is relative to the position of that bit. So if you were to lay a straight edge on this wheel and start going down it, that straight edge is going to stay completely flush pretty much with that wheel on the contact area through the progression of the blade. Jump over here to a point milled wheel, where as you guessed it, the point of the tool, think of the end of the bit, creates the same curvature. What you get with point milling is a more defined blade progression. So that is a complex curve from inducer to exducer. You ask why one is better than the other. In the world of performance, point milling allows us to 
maintain a much more desirable shape on both the suction side of the compressor wheel and the compression side of the compressor wheel. Efficiencies in the world of centrifugal, I mispronounce that word every time, compressors are measured in percentages and, and one or two percent can mean a world of difference in temperature and performance of a wheel. A flank milled wheel in most cases will perform as good or marginally better than a cast wheel. Cast wheels, because they are made from very intricate tooling, they have progression and complex geometry built into the blade form that a flank milled wheel cannot achieve. The flank milled wheel will get a little bit of a performance upgrade because generally it is made out of a more durable material so the blades can be thinner, the hub can be smaller, so the overall swept area of the blade is greater than that of a cast wheel. You can see the thickness of the blades, thickness of the hub. So by the time you basically get the benefit of a machined wheel, the accuracy of it, the flank milling really washes out and makes a little bit more power than the cast wheel does just based on the swept area. You jump into a point milled wheel. Since you're getting very accurate blade progression, you're getting a very defined shape. You can then, you guessed it, produce even more power over the flank milled wheel. The efficiency will also go up, usually one or two points, so the discharge temperature will be lower. You can really get extremely accurate with your blade thicknesses. So, uh, you know, if you want to taper these out real thin for whatever application, or if you want to put curvature in the splitter, things that are really hard to do with flank milling, you get that advantage with a point milled wheel. I'm going to get back to point milling in a minute. Forged. This is a Borg Warner 75 millimeter compressor wheel. It is flank milled. Aerodynamically, it is almost the exact same as the cast wheel. The hub diameters are the same. Blade thicknesses are relatively the same. Performance-wise, there's not much difference between a cast and a forge-milled wheel of the same family. They carry the same blade count. Like I said, they're just more durable. Forging gives you the ability to run this wheel at a operational speed or harmonic that normally would destroy a cast wheel. It's very important in the over-the-truck road and diesel generator stationary engine uh, places where this turbo is going to sit at 25 30 maybe even 40 pounds of boost for it could be an hour or two at a time reliability is your key with a forge milled wheel in our racing applications since we're only operating these wheels in short bursts at that psi a machine from solid or a non-forging sometimes is acceptable. When you really get down to it and you want the best of all of it, we can go forge milled and point milled all at the same time. This compressor is made out of a forging, so it's more density than a machine from solid or an MFS wheel. And it is point milled. Let's go back to the first wheel. You can see it on the camera. You can uh, see if I can even zoom in. You can see all of the machine points, the data points for that wheel. This is our basic point milled compressor arrow. It's pretty coarse, so you get a lot of little ridges in the surface. 
jump up to our forged wheel. It is still point milled. As you can see, it's, the points are extremely fine. So this wheel has some incredible detail to it. How much better is it than, than this guy? The numbers are measured in small percentages. The average street customer is going to really notice no difference between a flank milled wheel, our standard point milled wheel, or our forged high end, you know, no holds barred motorsports wheel. You get down to applications where 10 horsepower, 20 horsepower are big, big numbers. This is where this technology will reign supreme. Weight. I always get the question, billet wheels are always lighter, right? Let's grab our trusty, our trusty scale here. Let's see what we got. Let's start. We'll go to grams. Let's start with the standard Borg S475 wheel. 276 grams. Let's jump over to our flank milled, which is our wheel that we commonly put in our billet S475s. 245 grams. You know, you're uh, right at 30 grams lighter. Noteworthy deal, this wheel has the shaft nut. I just thought about that made into the wheel. So to be fair, let's grab a shaft nut for an S475. Go for our 276 gram. Throw that on there, 291 grams. So 291 to basically 245. So uh, 40, 45 grams of, of weight difference, basically. Um, can you notice that? Some applications can. Big, nasty, twin-turbo, big block on alcohol. No, not going to notice that weight difference. A uh, little small two-liter Honda running in a class that, you know, you've got to make every bit count. Uh, yeah, definitely going to notice that weight. Let's jump to our point-milled wheel. 224 grams, so definitely the lightest by far due to the thinner hub, the thinner blade. This wheel takes a special nut. I do not have any of them here, but we're going to throw the standard nut on there. So 239 grams, 239 grams for that wheel and a big heavy steel nut to 245 for the flank milled version. So big, big difference there in uh, weight. <laughs> um, forging, 75 millimeter, 285 grams. So even though it's flank milled, similar geometry, 284 grams compared to 275 grams, the forge milled wheel is actually heavier than its cast brother. The the technology today, uh, the main reason you'll see a lot of flank milled wheels. I've run this through some simulation time on uh, master cam. Uh, you know, we generally can see uh, mill times that exceed double to go to just our basic point milled. So if we got four hours of machine time in flank, we'll have eight hours of machine time in point. Our really nice forge point some of those can jump up into 10 hour cycle times. Cost, uh, obviously this time is money, machine running is money. So this wheel is gonna be your most cost effective upgrade. How much power do we see? Well, that's gonna depend a lot on the engine. Over a cast wheel, our performance S475 wheel, I'm gonna say the average LS customer is gonna see somewhere in the neighborhood of about 50 horsepower. Diesel guys, maybe somewhere around 30 horsepower. Now that's just dropping a wheel in, really doing nothing much more. If the wheel is more efficient, you can run more boost pressure. Uh, you run more boost pressure, you can see bigger gains. Uh, 
if you're pushing the cast wheel to its limit to where, let's say this seven bladed wheel starts choking because it's spinning so fast, it really runs into choke flow. Going down to a six blade wheel like this one can really open up the performance potential of the wheel. So on kill, we may see 150 horsepower in a race application difference between a cast and a billet wheel of this size. Um, I've had some customers come back with more numbers. I've had customers come back with way less. It's going to really depend on your, on your, you know, your setup that you have. Forge milled, my diesel guys, uh, sled pullers, um, uh, trucks that are going over the road, a lot of street use, a lot of cycle time. Uh, it's definitely the way to go. That wheel is as robust as it's going to get. We have options for forge milled, flank milled, our standard point milled and our high performance point milled wheel in, in all sizes for just about any turbocharger out there. If you got a specific question, hit me up, support at workturbochargers.com or drop a comment below. But this is just a general little overview of, of, of what we take away from cast billet wheels. I hope y'all guys enjoyed it and you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. I got one more video to do for y'all guys. I promised you two today. So Get it done. We'll talk to you later.